this was my box fish and her name was Penny. And when I saw her in the store, I just impulsively felt like I had to buy her and I always wanted a longhorn cowfish and I always liked the box fish species. So unfortunately I bought her without having enough knowledge and she's so cute and you can just see her um, swimming around and just being an adorable little cube. But my top recommendation before you even think about purchasing one of these fish is to just do your research and learn the proper care of what you need to do. So this is footage of me um, drip acclimating my yellow box fish and I drip acclimated her for about an hour which is you know pretty standard and important but I in doing so took a shortcut and didn't quarantine this fish. I just drip acclimated her for about an hour before putting her in my tank. A really important lesson to be learned here is to always quarantine new fish. Just do not risk it. You see me here automatically putting her in this new tank um, and I should not have done this um, even though she looked okay and I didn't see any ick on my box fish. She indeed did have an ick outbreak after this and things might have been a little bit simpler if I had just done my research and within 24 hours she was in this 20 gallon quarantine tank that I set up emergently. She had all of these white spots on her and unfortunately she ended up passing away within 48 hours of me putting this fish in my tank. Okay guys I want to just kind of sit down and talk to you guys about my tips um, with box fish care. I don't have a ton of footage obviously because my box fish passed away within like the first 48 hours of me having her. This video will hopefully help you to avoid that if you're thinking about getting a box fish. So the first really important thing to know um, is their diet. When you first get a box fish typically they're already really stressed. I mean they were like probably swooped out from the ocean and had to travel to your aquarium store, wherever you got the fish. Maybe you ordered it straight from some like online company. Now you're bringing them home again and acclimating or quarantining or whatever. The bottom line is the fish is really stressed and getting them to eat in the first place can be really difficult. I recommend that you pay attention to the fish you're looking at. Um, if it's at an aquarium store, make sure it's already eating a lot and you see it like picking in the rocks for things and Sometimes they like blow around in the sand for like worms and things like that. So make sure the fish is already eating. Once you bring the fish home, something that's kind of like enticing for them to like get them to eat is live baby brine shrimp, live ghost shrimp, or live blood worms. This is part of their natural diet from the ocean and it might be something that will compel them to eat before you could start feeding them frozen food. Generally they say it's easier to get the box fish to start eating frozen food and things like algae, um, maybe um, frozen table shrimp or clams they also eat if they're younger. It's easier if they're younger to start them out on that type of diet because they haven't had like a long time in the ocean to be used to all this live food and then all of a sudden dropped in, I don't know, a 150 gallon tank and suddenly like all their food is frozen or dead. On the topic of killing things in your tank, it's important to know that boxfish will eat LPS coral. They also eat things like feather dusters and tube worms and I think flatworms. This and some of the other reasons like I've been saying make boxfish not necessarily reef safe. You can get lucky and there's people who keep boxfish who just don't happen to eat their corals and that's awesome. But just so you know, they could eat your LPS corals. Like I said, I think it really depends on the boxfish. It's just in nature. They're typically drawn to LPS corals and they have like strong little mouths and they can like puncture through um, the LPS corals and kind of eat their like meaty, like fleshy insides. Boxfish are also really poor swimmers. They have tiny little like fins. Their like exterior is like a skeleton. They like sit in the same spot for a long period of time. It's really important if you're gonna keep a boxfish that for one, you have like a lower flow in your tank. Otherwise, it can be really exhausting and difficult for them to swim as well as catch food. This kind of brings me into my next point is if you're gonna keep a boxfish, 
cannot keep the fish with other aggressive tank mates. It's going to be really competitive for the box fish to be able to get food because they will be out swam. Also, this is like the biggest thing about box fish that most people know about, but if you don't, um, it is said that when box fish get stressed, they can release a neurotoxin that essentially bombs your whole tank. This is their like defense mechanism in the ocean. If you think about it, they're getting attacked and they become really stressed or whatever the case, they'll release this toxin that kind of like wards away predators because they have this huge ocean, right? So they can release this toxin and swim away or whatever. But when you have a box fish in a tiny tank that is literally a fraction of the size of the ocean, it will infest or contaminate your whole tank essentially and it's said to bomb and kill everything in the tank including itself. I have like done a lot of research and probably watched every box fish um, video on YouTube and I have not heard of this happening to anybody but I'm sure that it can and I know I wouldn't want to risk it. I'm sure you don't want to risk your tank either. The hobby takes a lot of work and a lot of time um, and money to be honest so I would just be really careful. Some good examples of peaceful tank mates would be clownfish, peaceful like butterfly fish, grass, chromis. I think cardinal fish are good too. Do your research, but if you're gonna have a box fish, you need to have peaceful tank mates so you don't kill everything in your tank. Another crucial piece of information about box fish is that as tiny as they are when you get them, like sometimes this big or even smaller, um, they can get pretty big. Pretty sure they can get like up to two feet long or 18 inches long. Regardless, that's pretty big, right? So this little like one inch fish can grow like this big. It really depends also on the box fish species. But why I'm saying this is that you can't have a box fish in a tiny. I have my box fish in this 40 gallon. Um, I've seen it done before when they're little. Um, could that box fish have stayed in that 40 gallon forever? Absolutely not. If you want to have a box fish that's going to like thrive and live a long life, you're going to have to either upgrade your tank eventually or uh, initially put it in a bigger tank. They say like the minimum is like 120 to 150 gallons. I've seen other videos where they say like a minimum of 250 gallons. It depends again on the species of box fish. The yellow box fish, I believe the minimum tank size recommended is like 125. But regardless, if you bring home a box fish and you're, just, you're doing something like me, like putting it in a 40 gallon tank, just be prepared to either bring the fish back to the store, which is going to be probably pretty stressful when it gets, it starts getting too big or you're going to need to upgrade your tank. One last really important thing about keeping a box fish is keeping them free from stress because box fish are really susceptible to getting diseases like ick, the big one. This is what happened to my box fish and I actually already knew they were susceptible to getting ick but when my fish got it so quickly and like unexpectedly I wasn't sure what to do and I immediately tossed it into a quarantine tank with copper. You are not supposed to put box fish in copper. There are people who've done it and they're successful with it, but there's a lot of people who do it and kill the box fish. It could just be like too much stress. They could get too stressed and release that toxin and essentially kill themselves. It's kind of not possible for me to say exactly what their cause of death is, but I know that box fish don't necessarily have gills. They have like a hard like skeleton the copper really irritates them and stresses them out more some people do like a really low dose copper um, if you do that you're gonna notice they like lose all their yellow color um, if you notice them like rapid breathing or swimming around really frantically they're probably really stressed and I would get the box fish out of the copper if you absolutely deem it necessary to do it they say the best thing that you could do is leave the box fish in the tank and like let it recover itself um, get some kind of like fish antibiotic. I actually have this called Metroplex, which is a marine and freshwater medication. And it literally is like an antibiotic for fish. You just like scoop it out and mix it in with their food. And it's a powder and it kind of like treats them like from the inside out. Obviously there's a bunch of products that are like fish safe that you can use. But if you don't have a bunch of other fish in the tank, 
you could consider leaving the box fish in the tank while it has an ick outbreak and treating it more naturally like immune boosting like supplements and medications if you're keeping the box fish in the tank and it has ick of course it's possible that your other fish are going to get infected really it's going to be your call and your best judgment just know that taking your box fish out of the out of its tank putting it in a quarantine tank could essentially cause more stress and cause it to die as well as putting copper in the quarantine tank really best to try and keep your water parameters as good as possible keep your box fish well fed um, two to three times a day even sometimes and if your flow is too crazy in your tank i would honestly recommend turning off your flow so they're not having to try and chase the food around the tank because as i've said and if you've seen um any any bleh. if you've seen any videos of box fish you can see they have tiny little fins and they don't swim very well i don't want this video to be too long but i really hope that it's at least helpful or puts you in the right direction of getting a box fish um, an idea of if you want a box fish or not um they're a lot of work and they don't have very high survival rates and i will say the biggest reason that i found is because of diet that's why the peaceful tank mates and the lower flow is really good for them thank you guys so much for watching this video i had a lot of fun making it if you have any questions at all about box fish or anything else be sure to leave a comment down below anything you want i'll see you guys in the next one bye